So I just hit the, there we go, my disclosures, which I showed earlier. Uh, these are the, the overview. Uh, I'll cover some take home points that I want everybody to kind of go away with. And then I'll give three case examples. Take home points, 90% of MCL injuries that I surgically treat, repair, that means repair or reconstruct are in combined ligament injuries. The MCL and POL have multiple components. You need to have to understand the anatomy. There's a superficial deep, and there's also menisco attachments that you have to understand. Most isolated MCL injuries, even grade three, can heal. Uh, less than five, 10% of isolated MCL injuries do I have to do something with. The timing, acute versus chronic of MCL injury, and the location of the tear, proximal, proximal mid-distal, are critical in making treatment decisions, surgical versus non-surgical. Most partial MCL injuries, grade one or two, right here, and even some complete grade three can heal. Early surgery, less than three weeks on MCL injuries, increases the risk for arthrofibrosis, shown here in the slide, a ter terrible complication. So when I can, delay surgery, let the swelling come down, range of motion increase, and you also have the benefit of possibly healing the MCL. I think classification of multiple ligament injured knees, this is my simple system of doing, uh, timing of the injury, acute versus chronic, which cruciates are involved, and specifically with the MCL, which part of it is involved, the grade of the injury, proximal, mid, distal, and in multiple ligament injured knees, you also have to know associated injuries. I'll finish with principles of management before going into the cases. Accurate classification. Be specific about the diagnosis, the timing, the location of the injury. If you can, delay surgery when possible. Protect the MCL in a hinged, hinged brace. Final decisions on surgery for me are based on my exam under anesthesia, and occasionally I'll use fluoroscopy to help me determine that. And finally, repair if possible, but when in doubt, always back up with a reconstruction for, for surgical treatment. Case number one, 16 year old female soccer player. She hyperextends her knee. She has an acute grade two to three PCL, high grade partial PCL and a complete MCL injury that's proximal. My plan on her, I'm gonna sit on her, brace her in full extension for a month. She'll go through a PCL rehab. And the question is, will she heal? And I predict it'll take her six, about six months to go back to play if she does. So here's her MRI, please look, this is a proximal grade three MCL. She opens in full extension, just slightly. A mid substance, grade two to three, two to three uh, M uh, PCL. Uh, please look, this is her September when I see her and January before I get her ready to return to play. The proximal injury is completely healed and then PCL shows significant uh, increase in the signal here. And I'll show you her exam. This is her exam at about four to five months out. Remember, she started with a grade two to three PCL. And her PCL now is one. There's a little bit of a posterior drawer, but she's totally asymptomatic. She's going through a functional rehab that Kevin's talked about. And her MCL is completely healed. So here's an example where I, I, could, I couldn't do better with surgical treatment. Next case is a grade two, a, a young college football player, acute grade three ACL, grade three MCL on the tibial side. Those don't usually heal. I'm not gonna go in on him. His motion stinks, he's swollen, so I'm gonna wait on him. Uh, here's his MRI. You can see the tibial sided injury here. I'll delay, brace him, and then he'll undergo ACL reconstruction. I'll use BTB autograft in him and an MCL repair because this is an easy repair right here. Uh, this is his exam and op opens at 30 degrees of flexion. This is my sequence of events. I'll do the arthroscopy, ACL tunnels, harvest my graft, pass my graft, secure it on the femoral side, do the entire MCL repair at 15 degrees of flexion. This is his final x-ray and this is him at three months. He's healed and he's got great motion. He has a normal Lachman and valgus stress test. Remember, I waited on this and there was no problem. The last case is a 21-year-old wrestler, acute grade three ACL, MCL, grade two PCL. He has a meniscal capsular tear. There's the map. I'm gonna delay surgery, hope I get some type of healing in his MCL and PCL. But, and here's how I treated him, braced him in full extension. This kid's a knucklehead. I uh, didn't listen to what I had, so here he is. He didn't heal anything. 
Okay, so I'm going to fix everything, including reconstruct his, AC, his, his, his uh, MCL with Achilles tendon allograft, uh, PCL, and ACL. And I'll just go quickly through this as I run out of time. This is my setup. I do not use tourniquet. I haven't used tourniquet for over 20 years. Uh, surgical technique, oh, do my cruise sheets, fix them on the femoral side, do my entire MCL, including reconstruction, and do my fixation of the cruise sheets on the uh, tibial side. Here is my cruise sheets. This is my MCL reconstruction. I'm going to get to the final. This is different knee, and this is my final EUA. This is four hours later. Sorry, that's what it takes me to do these four hours. And a good extension, full flexion, and he's stable to varus and valgus stress test. In conclusion, well, one thing, and Kevin's going to go over that. My tip here is go slow. These guys are knuckleheads. Don't trust them. They will destroy your reconstruction in a heartbeat. Kevin, I'll let you do the rest. In summary, isolated grade one or two, no. Isolated grade three MCL, occasionally. Combined injuries, one and two, most of those heal. Uh, complete, uh, complete, about 30 to 50% need something done. Of combined ligaments, a third can be repaired in my hands. Two thirds need reconstruction and be, beware of uh, arthrofibrosis. Thank you.